I'm James Ernest, welcome to my uh, game design workshop, and today we're going to learn how to play a prototype version of Girl Genius The Works. The Works is a puzzle game. I'm going to set up two players. You can play with three or four or five or six players. Uh, it's nice to play in teams if you can, because it's the sort of game where you like to set up moves for yourself or set up moves for your partner. You've got five cards in your hand, but most of the action takes place on the board, which is 12 cards in the middle of the table. <laughs> I'm going to flip over two cards to sort of jumpstart the board, and we're also going to use that to determine who goes first. So call odd or even. If you say odd, or then I'm even. Flip them over, add up the point values. Uh, the sum here is even, and that means that even goes first. The first thing you do on every turn is pick one face-down card and flip it up. So I'll flip that one up. Uh, the second step is you pick one face-up card and you spin it 180 degrees. Now what you're trying to do is line up symbols of the same color. You check around just the card that you spun and you see if any of the symbols that you line up uh, match color. In this case they don't, so that's the end of my turn. On your turn you might choose to flip over this card. And now you're going to spin a card. Uh, you can spin this one, line up those blue edges, and now the one with the more symbols is going to pop. What pop means is you pick it up, you follow its instructions, and then you put it in your score pile. This one says pop one minion. So I look around for the, the details and the names of these cards. I don't see any of the minions, so that's all that's going to happen. Then this goes in your score pile where it's worth five points. At the end of your turn, you're going to replace all the cards that you pop with cards from your hand. Uh, and without playing too slowly, we're going to do that. Here's some matching colors, but this didn't spin, so we don't get to look at that. You just put that down there, basically to lock this up so I can't make a move without on my next turn. And now I have a spin here, where I've lined up these two yellows. If they're the same length, then they both pop. And if you pop two cards at the same time, you follow them in alphabetical order. This is Agatha Heterodyne. She says pop one card. Uh, so I can actually pop a face down card with that. Let's do that. Pop one card. Oh, this is a Jaeger monster. It says, pop one soldier and put this card in another player's score pile. So that's going to start a mess. There's a lot of soldiers in play. There's other Jaeger monsters, and there's Moloch von Zinzer. He's a villain, and he's usually bad, but I, don't, I haven't actually dropped any of this into my score pile yet. He says, let another player draw a card from your score pile. Well, I don't have any cards in my score pile yet, so you get to miss that. That took care of him. That took care of her. So that was one chain of cards that started with pop one card, pop a soldier, and then draw a card. Now let's take a look at the second card in that sequence. This is a fencing clank and it says draw two heroes from your score pile. Okay, so Agatha's a hero, uh, and that's all the heroes there are, and then he goes in here. So at the end of that, I've got three cards in my score pile. I redrew one of them back into my hand, and I replaced those cards that I popped with more cards from my hand. At the end of your turn, if you have less than five cards, you draw back up to five. So you would have done that too by now. All right. So this move isn't too bad. You're going to spin Clay Mechanical. That's going to line up these green edges. The Jaeger Monster has seven symbols. Clay Mechanical only has six. So this is the card that pops. This says pop a soldier and let another player draw three cards from your hand. This is the same card again. And looking around, are there any more soldiers? Yes. This one says pop a soldier, let another player draw a card from your score pile. These are all getting followed in sequence, so they're all still in the air. And that was the last soldier in play, so, in this order, let another player draw a card from your score pile. I get to draw this into my hand, and then it goes down here. This says, let another player draw three cards from your hand. I will do that. And then I get to do that again, and that totally empties your hand and fills mine up, which is kind of not a big deal, except you now have zero cards in your hand to replace the cards that you took off the board. If you ever have zero cards in your hand, you draw one. So you're going to draw this one card, you're going to find a place where it fits, and then you're going to do that two more times, a card for here, and a card for here. Now at the end of your turn, you draw back up to five. So now it's my turn, I'm flipping the last card on the board. There's one new rule now, with the whole board face up, if you can pop something, you have to. And that is how you wind up forcing people to pop cards they don't want to pop. If I spin her, I'm going to pop her, and I don't want to. But because that's the only move on the board, 
That's the one I have to take. I could say to you, I don't see any moves. Uh, do you? And then you would show me this one, of course, because you want me to do it. I spin her and I pop her and it says, let another player pop one card of, your, the, of their choice. So on my turn, you're going to pop a card. Uh, you're going to pop something amazing. You're going to start by popping Agatha. She says pop a card. And that could go kind of anywhere and be pretty crazy. But just for simplicity, I'm going to say you do this. You, you choose Dr. Silas Merlot and pop him. Because he says move a villain from your hand to your score pile or lose a turn, and you happen to know that you have the Slaver Wasp Swarm, which is worth nine points, you're moving this into your score pile. You're not popping it. So even though it says lose one turn, you're going to ignore that. You're just dropping it from your hand straight into your score pile. Like that. Now here's the best thing about popping stuff on my turn, is that you get to replace it and then you get to go. So I'm going to replace the one card that I popped, and then you're going to play replacements that set you up for your next turn. The object of the game is to collect 70 points in your score pile, the first person to do that wins, and that's how you play the game. There's lots of different cards, lots of combinations. This is a prototype, so some of the cards you've seen in this might not be the same when they finally come out, but the core mechanics of the game are pretty solid, and that's how you play Girl Genius That Works.